We have an update in a story that I told you about back on September 26, dealing with the Fearless Fund. Now, the Fearless Fund is a grant program designed for women of color, especially African-American women. So you may may have remember uh, me talking about the article from the Washington Post where a federal judge in Georgia refused to issue an injunction on Tuesday, September 26, 2023 that would have barred the Atlanta-based Fearless Fund from issuing grants for early stage businesses owned by African-American businesswomen and women of color. Now, the decision could have implications beyond the venture capital firm at a time when corporate diversity efforts are facing growing legal and political pushback. Uh, the Fearless Fund was founded by uh, Ayanna Parsons, Ariane Simone, and actress Keisha Knight Pullum, who we know from The Cosby Show and House of Pain. Well, on Saturday, September 30th, 2023, a panel of uh, a panel of federal appellate judges, a panel of three federal appellate judges, temporarily blocked uh, the Fearless Fund venture fund from awarding twenty thousand dollar grants to African American uh, female entrepreneurs and women of color. Uh, the judges wrote that the program was, quote, racially exclusionary, end quote, racially exclusionary and substantially likely to violate a federal law prohibiting racial discrimination in contracting. I'm Michael M. Hotel, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. It's Friday, October 6, 2023. Hope you're doing well today. We have an update in this story. Now, I spoke with Ariane Simone and uh, Ayanna Parsons on Roland Martin Unfiltered a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and this was a lawsuit filed by a uh, conservative activist, Ed Bloom, and um, his organization and uh, American Alliance for Equal Rights, American Alliance for Equal Rights. We know that Ed Bloom is the conservative activist who filed the lawsuit to end uh, affirmative action in college-based admissions as well. So Washington Post has a, uh, a story uh, dealing with this update. This took place on Saturday, September 30th, uh, 2023. Now, the temporary injunction issued by a panel uh, on the U.S. Circuit Court of uh, the U.S. Court of Appeals, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit, prevents the private uh, fearless fund from closing its application window. So they didn't rule that their fearless fund is illegal, but it bars them from closing the application window, the window of time for um, applicants to apply for the grants. Now, the fearless fund was sued this past summer by, cons by a conservative group alleging that is programmed discriminated on the basis of race by exclusively handing out grants to black female business owners. Now, they don't hand out grants exclusively to black female business owners. When I spoke to the founders on Roland Martin Unfiltered, um, they said that the grants are for uh, women of color business owners. Now, these are two Af these are three African-American women who founded the Fearless Fund but they don't give them exclusively to African-American women. Now, in the lawsuit that Ed Bloom uh, filed, and if we look at the, uh, we can look at the first, article. well, let's look at this article here from um, the Washington Post. Uh, this is from September 30th, 2023. Federal court halts private grant program for black female entrepreneurs in, ensu in ensuing an injunction, the appellate panel uh, wrote that the Fearless Fund's racially exclusionary program might violate a federal anti-discrimination law. Now, Ed Bloom is suing based upon the uh, 1866 Civil Rights Act, the Civil Rights Act of 1866, which was passed for the uh, past during Reconstruction, and it was uh, passed to help 
former slaves, African Americans, uh, enter into contracts, negotiate wages, enter into labor contracts, et cetera. And it was giving to African Americans the same rights that white people had. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 is the uh, foundation of the uh, 14th Amendment of 1868, okay? And uh, Ed Bloom is citing its uh, section 1981 of the Civil Rights Act of 1866, okay? So if we, now what they want to do is they really want to go after the corporations that are working with uh, the Fearless Fund. The Fearless Fund is working with corporations like uh, MasterCard, uh, JP Morgan Chase, et cetera. They've partnered uh, with the Fearless Fund, okay? Now, what's interesting is that you, the, the, the grants are for $20,000. African Americans get in 2022 got 1.1% of the over $200 billion in venture capital money. And you have Ed Bloom suing this group of African American women who are giving away grants of $20,000. Now, Saturday's decision reverses a Tuesday, September 26 ruling by U.S. District Judge Thomas W. Thrash, who denied a request for uh, by the plaintiff, the American Alliance for Equal Rights, which is Ed Bloom's organization. Ed Bloom's a 70 year old white man, conservative, who is attacking these African-American, uh, 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 who's attacking uh, diversity, equity and inclusion, basically. OK, so they was uh, they were sued to halt the grant awards process. Now, the uh, alliance, the uh, American Alliance for Equal Rights, led by conservative conservative activist, activist Ed Bloom, filed this lawsuit in August of 2023, a month after the U.S. Supreme Court effectively banned race conscious college admissions through rulings on cases that Ed Bloom initiated against Harvard University and the University of North Carolina. So Ed Bloom ends uh, affirmative action when it comes to college admissions. Now he's attacking uh, grant programs for, after, uh, for, for uh, women of color business owners. Quote, the members of the American Alliance for Equal Rights are gratified that the 11th Circuit has recognized the likelihood that the Fearless Fund Strivers Grant Contest is illegal. And I want to go to that uh, statement from uh, the Fearless Fund. I mean, from uh, Ed Bloom's group. That was the piece from, I think that's in the piece from the Washington Post. Let me find that here just a second. We got a couple of articles. Uh, also, there was a piece from uh, abcnews.com on this that I read as well. Okay, now the uh, t two of the three judges were judges appointed by Donald Trump. Inter interestingly enough, the two judges appointed by Donald Trump ruled against the fearless fund one judge was appointed um by i think one judge was appointed by uh well the the previous judge judge thrash was appointed by bill clinton and um the other judge who ruled in their favor of the three judges i forgot who uh that judge was appointed by but this shows the um impact that judges have federal judges have okay so the members okay here's the statement from uh ed bloom's group let's pull this up here okay right here you should be able to see this 
Uh, the members of the American Alliance for Equal Rights are gratified that the 11th Circuit has recognized uh, the likelihood that the Fearless Fund Strivers Grant Contest is illegal, Ed Bloom said in a statement on Saturday. But we look forward to the final resolution of this lawsuit, end quote. Now, a separate 11th Circuit uh, panel will now decide whether the Fearless Fund uh, will be blocked from awarding money under its Fearless Strivers Grant Contest while the case is litigated in district court. Saturday's, uh, Saturday, September 30th, order merely halts the grant process until that separate panel issues a ruling. It is unclear when that determination will be made. It is unclear when that determination will be made. Now, uh, the Fearless Fund, a, a, a lawyer representing the Fearless Fund, Jason Schwartz, uh, said in a statement, quote, we respectfully disagree with the decision appreciate the important points made by the dissent, the the uh, the one judge who uh, dissented in their favor by the dissent and look forward to further appellate review, said Jason Schwartz, a lawyer with Gibson, Dunn and Crutcher, which is representing the Fearless Fund. Quote, we remain committed to defending our clients' meaningful work. We remain committed to defending our our clients meaningful work. now judge thrash um judge D jw uh judge um uh, thrash who was appointed by president bill clinton denied the bloom led alliances preliminary injunction request on tuesday september 26 ruling from the bench that the fearless funds grant program qualified as charitable giving a form of protected speech under the first amendment so this goes back to the u.s constitution all this goes back to law okay this is why we have to read and understand the u.s constitution and politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth and resources and the writing of law statutes ordinances amendments and treaties their uh, adoption interpretation and enforcement so uh judge j uh judge uh thrash ruled that the charitable giving was a form of free speech okay well the uh uh judge thomas w thrash he ruled that the charitable giving was a form of free speech the two judges appointed by donald trump stated that it's not a form of free speech okay let's go back to the article here from the washington post so uh, protected speech under the First Amendment. Now, the uh, American Alliance, uh, Ed Bloom's organization, appealed. Uh, they, they appealed hours later. Now, in Saturday's order, uh, Saturday's uh, order from the uh, two appellages, a majority of the three judge appeals panel held that the First Amendment does not protect fund from awarding grants only to black women, but they don't award them only to black women. Now, what happened was I, I brought this up when uh, we spoke with uh, the two uh, ladies on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Ed Bloom said in his lawsuit that they only, uh, that the uh, grants are for black women only, but that's a lie. That's a blatant lie. They are for women of color, including black women. All right. Now, judges Robert J. Luck and L. Brasher were both appointed by President Donald Trump. They both concluded that the plaintiffs established that the Fearless Fund was, quote unquote, substantially likely to violate the law if they closed the application window and awarded the grants. OK, now, lifetime appointment, the, 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 these. Um, federal judges, this is a lifetime appointment, okay? These judges can be on the bench ruling for the next 20, 25, 30, 35 years, okay? Possibly longer than that. This is why who you vote for president, 
or who you vote for the U.S. Senate is so important because the president nominates uh, federal judges and the uh, U.S. Senate confirms federal judges. And we know that in 2014, when uh, Republicans took back control of the House of Representatives and Mitch McConnell was leading the uh, he was leading the U.S. Senate. Uh, uh, Republicans took back control of the U.S. Senate, I, I should say. And Mitch McConnell was leading the U.S. Senate. Uh, McConnell and Republicans blocked 103 federal judge nominations made by President Barack Obama. They also blocked uh, Merrick Garland, who was President Barack Obama's uh, Supreme Court uh, nominee as well. So then when uh, Donald Trump won through the Electoral College and got 306 Electoral College votes, because a lot of people don't understand how the Electoral College works and don't understand that it takes 270 Electoral College votes to become president, president elect. And you win Electoral College votes by winning the popular vote in the state. So anybody that tells you that the popular vote doesn't matter is lying and they have not read the U.S. Constitution, especially the 12th, especially the 12th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution from 1803. OK, because uh, you have to to win the Electoral College votes associated associated with the state. Generally speaking, you have to win the popular vote in that state. So the popular vote does matter, but it's not the national popular vote that matters is the popular vote per state that matters so donald trump got 226 federal judges confirmed these are all lifetime appointments and he nominated oftentimes very ultra conservative judges that came from lists given to him by the heritage foundation and the federalist society that are two very conservative think tanks that focus on shaping law and for law okay so we have to understand how all this is connected okay now uh if we go back to uh this article here from the washington post now in the dissent uh judge charles r wilson a clinton appointee wrote that he would deny the injunction arguing that the alliance uh did not meet the requirements uh, now, Judge Wilson criticized the plaintiff's citation of the Civil Rights Act of 1866, a Reconstruction era law meant to grant economic rights to enslaved people who were emancipated. OK, Judge Wilson wrote, quote, it is a perversion of congressional intent to use the law against a remedial program whose purpose is to bridge the gap in venture capital funding for women of color founders, bridge the gap in venture capital funding for women of color founders, a gap that is the result of centuries of intentional racial discrimination, uh, uh, Judge Wilson uh, wrote. Okay, now, now Judge Wilson, Judge Charles R. Wilson is a uh, President Bill Clinton appointee. Now, in addition, the Fearless Fund case, in addition to the Fearless Fund case, uh, the Ed Bloom Alliance in August sued two law firms, Perkins Coy and Morrison uh, Forster, alleging that the firm's diversity fellowships uh, for law students discriminated on the basis of race. So what's happened is that this you this is a continuation of this backlash that Donald Trump unleashed when he was in office. OK, the, on the 1619 project, the uh, attack on uh, uh, critical race theory. All right. And this goes back to a uh, September 2020 memo that uh, is actually a, a September 20 executive order that uh, Donald Trump issued when he was president that banned. Um, critical race theory being uh, taught to federal employees, okay? Th this whole backlash dealing with critical race theory began with Donald Trump. This is why you cannot let crazy people have power, crazy deranged people who have authoritarian tendencies. Then he uh, went after the 1619 Project, 
and attacked and demonized the 1619 project. And even though there's some flaws in it, it shouldn't be attacked and demonized, especially the way that the, the, the right wing is doing this. OK, if you read this article for further uh, uh, background, for background information on this, uh, if you read this piece here. And I'm going to I'm going to go to my file on uh, critical race theory. There's one dealing with uh, from NBC News, how um, how Trump unleashed the. Uh, how how Trump ignited the fight. Over critical race theory in schools, how Donald Trump ignited the fight over critical race theory in schools. OK, everybody should read this piece here from uh, NBC News dot com. Let me pull this up. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a heart. Give us a like on this broadcast. This is an example of how elections have consequences. Now, you have all these people out here who are, are saying stupid things like we don't need to vote. We just need to do economic empowerment and and uh, 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 do, uh, be like the Asians. We don't need to vote. OK, well, politics and law influences your economic empowerment. Now, what are the people who, who, who are saying we don't need to vote? What are they saying about this? Law and politics influences your economic empowerment. Law and policies influence the economic environment that your business operates within. 80% of African-American-owned businesses go out of business in the first 18 months. All right, now, if we... Uh, look at this piece here from NBC News. Okay, you, you've heard me talk about this article before. This is from NBCnews.com. Everybody share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a heart. Give us a like. How Trump ignited the fight over race, uh, over critical race theory in schools. Republican lawmakers across the country have proposed bills to ban critical race theory in K-12 schools. Here's what that really means. Now, this article is from May 10th, 2021. OK. And in here, it talks about um, conservative leader leaders have been accused of using the decades old academic term critical race theory initially intended to recognize the systemic racism inherent in American life as a cat using it as a catch all uh, for anti racism and diversity efforts. So, most people, most Republicans don't know what critical race theory is. Okay. That is a, that is a legal analysis that's taught in law schools, graduate schools, a little bit at the graduate level. It's not taught in K through 12 critical race theories, general, generally speaking. The proposed policies mimic former President Donald Trump's September 2020 memo. OK, this was an executive order ordering the order, the office, ordering the Office of Management and Budget to stop funding training on critical race theory for federal employees, calling it a, quote unquote, propaganda effort, calling it, quote unquote, a propaganda effort. This is what Trump did. He's the one who ignited this whole backlash over critical race theory. Critical race theory was created uh, in the late 1960s, okay, after Dr. King's assassinated. So it's been around over, over 40 years. Why the backlash now? Now, around this same time, around September 2020, Donald Trump condemned the 1619 Project, a Pulitzer Prize winning 2019 New York Times report reporter Nicole Hannah Jones that holds that America was truly founded not in 1776 but in 1619 when the first enslaved people were brought to the colonies okay now we know I've dealt with this numerous times we know African people were here in this land we call the United States of America or Turtle Island going back at least 51,000 years ago the Khoi, these are the Khoisan who have the oldest DNA on the planet, come from Southern Africa, and they go all around the world. They were here in this land also, the short-statured Africans. Now, uh, if you read The First Americans Were Africans, documented evidence by Dr. David M. Hotep, 
he deals with this there. I've interviewed him about 13 times. We know Dr. David M. Hotep just passed away a couple weeks ago. Okay. So uh, some of you all saw my Facebook post about that. Now, educators embraced this message and began utilizing the 1619 project and looking for resources to teach a more holistic uh, history of the country. Donald Trump rebuked the 1619 project as a warped, distorted portrayal of American history. OK, quote unquote, quote, warped, distorted, quote, portrayal of American history, both the executive order banning critical race theory uh, being taught to federal employees and this attack on the 1619 project sparked the commission of the 1776 report, which Donald Trump commissioned. The 1776 report was meant to combat the contents of the 1619 project. Now, when Joe Biden became president, he, he disbanded the 1776 commission and he removed the 1776 report from whitehouse.gov, which is the official website of the White House. Now, the countrywide uprisings in the wake of George Floyd's death only fueled the matter with pundits debating the nation's fraught history of racism. Thus, although President Joe Biden reversed Donald Trump's initial ban in January, January of 20, uh, January 2021, when Biden took the oath of office January 20th, 2021, the seed had been planted. The seed had been planted. So this whole backlash, this backlash from this backlash dealing with book bans, right? Uh, all this goes back to this attack, this fake attack on critical race theory, the attack on the 1619 project. And we see all this expand from that, okay? Read the rest uh, of this article here, uh, how Trump ignited the fight over critical race theory in schools. So this is connected. So this attack on the fearless fund, this attack on diversity, equity, and, and inclusion, right, is within this whole context of anti-blackness, this whole context of attacking policies that are beneficial for African-Americans, calling them racist or their reverse racism. And then you have uh, people like Trump and others who then want to say that white people are the real victims of racism. They're the biggest victims of racism, et cetera. OK, which is nonsense. This is absolute nonsense. OK, but Trump is always, always playing the victim. All right. So check out this piece here from um, The Washington Post. Now, the, the first article that um, there was a, uh, from the Washington Post from August 26, 2023. Now, what's really interesting here is uh, African-Americans only get 1.1% uh, of the $214 billion in uh, venture capital uh, money, okay? And if we look at this uh, article from the Washington Post. They invest in black women. A lawsuit claims it's discrimination. They in invest in black women. A lawsuit claims it's discrimination. OK, and we have to also be careful of how th these laws that were designed for African-Americans uh, during the Reconstruction era, how, how they're being used against us as well. OK. And at the very same time, okay, so they're using, for instance, they're using the Civil Rights Act of 1866, right? Now, at the very same time, you have uh, conservatives, especially black conservatives, who say slavery was a long time ago that has nothing to do with now. But they want to use a law from the slavery era to attack African-Americans right now. Chattel slavery ends 1865, December 6, 1865, when the 13th Amendment is ratified uh, uh, by Georgia ratifying the 13th Amendment. The next year, you have the Civil Rights Act of 1866. So the same conservatives who say slavery was a long time ago and that has nothing to do with today, then want to use a slavery era law or a Civil War or Reconstruction era law 
to attack African Americans today. Uh, this piece here from the Washington Post, uh, they invest them. This is from August 26, 2023. Okay. They invest in black women. A lawsuit claims is discrimination. Conservative activist Edward Bloom's nonprofit organization is suing Fearless Fund, alleging that the firm's grant program for companies run by black female entrepreneurs is discriminatory. All right. Now, if we uh, there's a piece here that I want to uh, look at. Now, here's a picture of Ed Bloom here. OK, doesn't he look sad? All right. Now, Fearless Fund is one of dozens of firms geared toward combating the well-documented racial imbalance in U.S. venture capital. Last year, 2022, 1.1 percent of the two hundred and fourteen billion dollars in venture capital funding allocated went to black went to companies with black founders, according to data from Crunchbase. In 2019, research from Stanford University concluded that founders uh, that, that founders of color face more bias from professional investors uh, the better they perform, okay? In 2019, research from Stanford University concluded that founders of color face more bias from professional investors the better the uh, these companies perform. All right, now, uh, Ayanna Parsons and Ariane Simone, the two black women who founded Fearless Fund, said they got used to hearing the word no when they were starting out. Okay, uh, and the Fearless Fund is backed by MasterCard and Bank of America uh, and have uh, in, and have invested in, in more than 40 businesses in the past four years, including popular brands um, like like the slutty vegan restaurant chain in Atlanta and the lip bar makeup company. The firm has doled out more than $26 million in investments and $3 million in grants. Okay. So what people like Ed Bloom and others that are filing these lawsuits, what they're trying to do is create fear. Even if they lose the lawsuit, they're trying to create fear to stop organizations like the Fearless Fund from operating, one, and two, to create fear amongst the uh, corporations that have partnered with the Fearless Fund as well to get them to back off, okay? So this is a diabolical game that is, that is being played, but it's taking place in the courts, Okay, this is why when I teach about political self-defense, I tell you, we need to understand the law better than they understand the law. Everything they do to us, they use the law to do it. Then when they get caught breaking the law, they go hire an attorney at law to defend them in the court of law. So the common denominator is law. Okay, which means we need to understand the law better than they understand the law. And they're going back to 1866 with this. So once again, all these conservatives out here and black conservatives that want to say, oh, slavery was a long time ago. That has nothing to do with today. They're using the law from 1866 to sue us. Okay, now, uh, part of their legal team for uh, the Fearless Fund, uh, they have uh, uh, attorney Benjamin Crump uh, on their uh, legal team, as well as, and I got an article that deals with this. Uh, they've partnered with the uh, NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Uh, to fight the lawsuit, the Fearless Fund lined up a heavyweight defense team with expert with expertise in civil rights, including the uh, NAACP Legal Defense Fund. And if we go to uh, the article that we talked about in the other broadcast, Judge Allows Grant Program for Black Female Entrepreneurs to, to Conclude, uh, to continue, this is from September 26, 2023. This was the first ruling. If 
we look at this here, um, their legal defense, uh, the, uh, the fearless fund, uh, teamed up with to fight this lawsuit. They teamed up with, uh, the NAACP legal defense fund, uh, Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher, and Benjamin Crump, uh, and as well as others. All right, so check out these articles. Stay tuned for this. Um, we're going to see more lawsuits filed to attack the economic empowerment that African Americans are engaging in, uh, while at the same time, some of these same people will tell us to pull pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. When that's not how they did it, they got government help. When you study their history, they got government help. And if you read uh, this book here, "How White Folks Got So Rich: The Untold Story of American White Supremacy," third edition. It breaks that down. They got they got government help. I'm not saying white people you didn't have some white people that worked hard, but they got government help. Whether it was the GI Bill of 1945, whether it was the Homestead Act of 1862 that gave away 278 270 million acres of land for 124 years from 1862 during the Civil War to 1976. So once again. All these people who want to say slavery was a long time ago, we I can go back. We can deal with the laws that still impact us today from that era, either from slavery or the Reconstruction era or right after re, or post Reconstruction. We can look at that. The, the Homestead Act gave away 270 million acres of land for 124 years, almost exclusively to white people. Then the Southern Homestead Act of 1866 that gave away about 45 million acres of land. The Dawes Allotment Act of 1887 gave away 138 million acres of land. Two thirds, and, and, and the majority of that land was supposed to go to uh, Native Americans and black Indians. White people got two thirds of that land. So this is government. This is an affirmative action program for white people. I'm not talking about 246 years of slavery, which is an affirmative action program for white people. I'm not talking about, talking about that. I'm talking about largely like toward the end of slavery or after slavery ends, massive land giveaways. We just look at that right there. OK, hopefully you like this type of information. Um, be sure to visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. Register for the online history classes that I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, we, uh, I teach the class of Saturdays and Sundays, ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. So we deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. So visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. Uh, we have the information for our Sunday night uh, show, 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In the Twitter online course that I teach on Saturdays, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, our next classes are Saturday, October 17th, October 14th, 21st, and 28th. Uh, we deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. This is a very visual class. I've been teaching this class on and off uh, since uh, 2017. I put together the course. Uh, we look at 80 to 100 articles. We have 15 books that we use in the class. And we go through and look at this history chronologically to understand what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. OK, and uh, join us uh, Saturday because we're getting we're dealing with the history of the Moors as well. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. Uh, we have a bundle pack for only a hundred dollars where you get the Saturday class and the and the Sunday class. Um, the Sunday class is black resistance movements from the Haitian Revolution, U.S. Civil War, Civil Rights Movement and Black Power Movement. Uh, we have another session of the Sunday class coming up uh, uh, on uh, Sunday, October 8th. OK, and. You don't have to be in class live. 
Uh, we do the sessions live, but they're all archived and recorded. So you go back and watch it anytime. So even after the course is over with a year from now, two years from now, you can go back and watch the entire class. OK, and you can use this information with your children. I would say the uh, information is PG-13. I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips. Uh, it's very visual. And um, if we have interviews. We have clips of interviews uh, that I've done with Professor Kaba Kamane, Professor James Small, Dr. David M. Hotep, Dr. Linda Jeffries, and some others. Uh, Renoko Rashidi, um, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. I've interviewed some of everybody. So you get uh, uh, Tony Browder. You get uh, we, we have excerpts of interviews I've done with Tony Browder also. Uh, so we can't start the study of our history in slavery. Uh, we have to deal with thousands of years of history that leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. Also, um, we have a link on the website where you can uh, look at the um, course outlines. OK, so you've never seen a class like this. Register right now and you can start watching the content and you can join us in class uh, on a Saturday and Sunday. OK, and you can also support the African History Network dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App or through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Uh, we have the information scroll down the website. We have the information right here. We have the links here. And this is our official Cash App account dollar sign the AHN show S-H-O-W. When you go to it, it'll say Michael. It may show my picture there. These other ones and others like it are fake African History Network cash app accounts that have been stealing money from us. That's why I put our link right here and it has our QR code. OK. All right. So we have to get out of here. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on uh, educating, empowering and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Also on our website, my lectures are there, digital download format and DVD format. You can order those as well. OK, remember, right now is correct. Wrong behavior is not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And we'll talk to you next time. Peace. Uh, hopefully you learned a lot uh, today and be sure to register for the online history classes that I teach on uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, Saturdays, normally 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I teach uh, ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. Visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com to register for the online classes. And right on uh, the homepage, scroll down, you see information about our radio show. We're on Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We broadcast on our social media platforms. Uh, my class is Ancient Kemet, one of the original names for Egypt, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, where they didn't teach you in school. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place, okay? So you can join us uh, Saturday, October 7th and 14th um and uh 21st and 28th 2 p.m to 4 p.m eastern standard time we have a couple of videos here you can watch as well that the previews the classes on sale 80 dollars regularly 130 dollars we do the sessions live all the sessions are archived and recorded actually uh, we dropped the price to 60 dollars so on sale 60 dollars regularly 130 dollars we do the sessions live all the sessions are archived and recorded you can go back and watch them uh anytime okay so uh, even after the um, class is over with, you still have access. So a year from now, two years from now, you can go back and watch the entire course. Sundays, I teach uh, black resistance movements from the Haitian Revolution, U.S. Civil War, Civil Rights Movement, and Black Power Movement, 1800 to 1968. So uh, we're going to have another uh, session of this class uh, coming up um, October 14th, Okay. Uh, I'll say Sunday, October 15th. We'll have another session of this class coming up Sunday, October 15th. So as soon as you register, you can go watch the previous classes. Uh, this class is on sale, $40. As soon as you register, you can go back and watch the previous classes and uh, you'll be ready to uh, join us uh, Sunday, October 15th. Uh, also, if you'd like to stop for information, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me 
forward slash the AHN show. This helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting, pay some of the bills. All right, we have to get out of here. Remember, right now, it's correct wrong behavior is not over till we win. We're kind of forever, and we'll talk to you next time. Peace.